What's going on everybody? Welcome to part eight of the unconventional neural network series. In this part, I'm just gonna be running through the code that I've used to create frame by frame uh, the frames of a deep dream. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just take the code from the text-based version of the write-up. Uh, really none of this code I, I think is necessary for us to be writing it out. Um, so I'm not gonna do that. Also, I think there's a lot of improvements that could be made. So, which I'll be asking you for momentarily. So I'm actually just gonna make a new file. I'm gonna call it dreamon.py. Yes, sir. Uh, let's edit with Sublime. I'm gonna close, oh, this is still running. <laughs> let's see, how do I stop this thing from running? Cancel build. Good day. Let me just close it. I just want that to go away for now. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and paste from my sample code, my code, and then I think I'll just kind of run through it real quickly. Uh, like I said, I, this is pretty rudimentary Python, so <laughs> there's really no reason to, to make you guys write this one out. So basically, we're, yeah, we're importing things just like we did before. We grab, we're just going to specify which layer we want to work with. Uh, we're going to call it something because... Arg. Yeah, here, basically the dream goes into this dream directory. And then um, at least in dream start, I've kind of named everything and it should be good to go. Uh, and then in there is an image zero. Now, if you're going to work on your own dream, which again, I highly recommend you do, it just makes it more interesting. Um, just go into the dream directory, make a new one, call it whatever the heck you want. And then inside it, put your image, which should be a JPEG, and then just call it image underscore zero. And in my case, this image is uh, a 450, or I'm sorry, 800 wide by 450 tall image. Just take note of whatever size image you have. The larger the image you have, the longer it is going to take to process, um, but the cooler it is uh, when it's actually done. So uh, let's see, coming back over to Dream On. Actually, it's just right in here. We can see some of my lovely, lovely code. Um, basically, right away, I just specify the size. Um, there's plenty of functions you could write to get the image size. I'm j just going to write the freaking numbers in there. Um, but you could dynamically grab the sizes. Um, then what this does is just kind of tracks how far we are. So if you let the dream go on and on and on and on, eventually it usually gets too bright or too dark or something goes wrong. So usually you kind of want to check on it after so many frames. You don't have to. Um, I've easily gone thousands of frames without needing to mess with anything. It just really kind of depends on, on you and, and what your dream kind of randomly does. Um, so you feel free to set this to whatever you want. And then this is just a for loop. Um, I just want to grab an eye from it. So this is the way I've done it. I'm sure there's a better way. Uh, this is just what I kind of hacked together because I just really wanted to see the results. So <laughs> basically all it's going to do is it's going to go into the dream directory and then it basically just looks and it says, okay, in this dream directory, how many images do we have? All it's trying to do is figure out what was the latest image. And that's the image we're going to dream upon dream upon. And man, lately I can't talk. <laughs> Anyway, that's the dream image that we're going to start with and we're going to let it dream on. So, lovely planes going over the house. Uh, so, it'll just keep going through I until we figure out what the latest I could be. And then we're going to load in that image. And then we're going to specify a trim to that image. Now, one thing I do not like about how I'm doing this right now is, if you'll give me a moment, let me pull up uh, the other one. It's the, the one I've been working on so far. Um, it starts with Starry Night, but as you can see, it actually, um, when it starts to zoom in, it's actually zooming in right to this point. I'd really like a center zoom. <laughs> I'd like to be able to do that. The other thing I noticed is like, it stretches out everything except for around this point. So it's, it's not quite what I was hoping for. Um, so hopefully someone can come up with a better zoom function. Um, I just wanted to do something to keep things moving, um, moving along. So I'm going to exit that. Um, I'll show the full one uh, probably somewhere towards the end or I'll just upload it or something. This one's a pretty cool one, uh, going very specifically through the layers at a time. So anyways, uh, that's how much I want to trim by. Uh, then basically what we do is we trim each size. I believe, let me just make sure I've done that, minus the Y trim all the way to something minus. 
So somewhere in there, my logic is wrong. I just like I'd like to zoom into the center. Someone, someone figure that out. <laughs> Next, um, as you even, you probably noticed um, the it, when you deep dream on an image for whatever reason, it's somewhere in that deep dream code probably. Uh, the image gets a little darker, just a little bit darker, probably because we are clipping. So like if maybe we did some sort of, I, I don't know how you'd do it better, but it does seem to get a little darker. So each time here we modify the R, the G, the B, you can just add a couple to each one, all you know, all of them, you just add a little bit more. So this would make the, the image get overall a little brighter. You could also alternatively add like uh, like if you wanted the image to turn more red over time, you could do something like this. That would produce a lot of reds. Uh, if you really like the color purple, you could do reds and blues together. You get more purples probably, um, stuff like that. So you kind of have to find the sweet spot there. I'm going to leave it where it is for now. Um, then uh, you do pretty much all the things that you've already seen before. Like none of this is anything different, which is why I didn't want to write it up. Um, and yeah, the, the main thing here to keep in mind is at least when you first start, number of iterations shouldn't be 15. It probably should be one, honestly. As you get further into the uh, the new design, you might want to do more iterations, but to start for the first few frames, you should keep it low, one to three, something like that. Number of repeats should always be one. You can basically each frame is a repeat, so there's no need for you to be doing many repeats. Um, because like I said, yeah, each frame is the effect is effectively a repeat. So uh, cool, everything looks good. Uh, we're on layer three, so I think we're good enough to, we could probably generate at least a few images here. I'm gonna keep num iterations to three. Uh, I think we're good, let's rumble, let's just run this thing. Um, I have no idea actually, I should have checked the last video, how the video did when I ran Deep Dream and was recording. I have no idea if it's, screwing me up or not. Hopefully not. I'll find out. <laughs> so as that runs and is process processing the image, we can start to see results are already coming in. As you get deeper, as you change um, the number of iterations, you're gonna, it's going to take much, much longer than this. And if you use a bigger image, it's going to take much, much longer. But what we can do is we can begin to zoom in. And as you can already see, the image is kind of changing. And really quickly, actually, we can see the squares are forming. So that's pretty cool. So let me see how far, uh, at least on Windows. If you're on Linux, you, I think you can actually just keep going. But as you can see, so this is one way we can very slowly begin to morph this image into, um, into whatever we're trying to dream about. So after you've gotten this far, you know, you can probably just, okay, let's make the iterations. I don't know. You could probably just keep doubling it up. I would just keep going until about 20. But all of this stuff, you really could... Um, you really could write the program to handle for you, including like brightness, random color changes, the layer changes, um, all the stuff you could write a program to just automatically do for you. But I kind of find it's it's kind of fun to 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 manually mold the the model. But by all means, you can definitely control overall brightness and all that stuff, and just kind of like let a model run for a long time. But everything is so slow to make a real true dream, like the 1080p dream that I've been working on. Um, that's been taking like days and days and days. It's just been running and running and running. So it just takes a long, long time. Now with the images as small as the ones that we've been working with, it, it wouldn't take necessarily as long. But anyway, as you can see, that's just a good way to make a nice smooth transition from the image into, um, into our little squares, basically. <laughs> um, so that's how you can make frames. Now, in the next tutorial, I will show you all how you can go from frames to an actual video. Um, obviously, there's a ton of different ways that you can do it. We're gonna be using Python to do it, uh, but there's like a million ways you could take frames and convert to video. So anyways, uh, that's what we're gonna do in the next one, and then I'll show you at least in part, uh, well, I've already showed a little bit of it, but I'll show you the rest of it. Uh, probably in the, or maybe not the rest of it. I don't know, it's kind of long. Anyways, um, I'll show you at least how to make videos in the next tutorial. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Uh, otherwise, see you in the next video.